Hi guys, this is Ildi from Neurocentric Health and Fitness and today we'll do a little bit of shoulder mobility. Why is that important to keep moving our shoulders or to have some kind of freedom in the shoulders? Well, let's say we travel again soon when this pandemic is over and we want to put the overhead luggage over the head on the plane. So we do need to be able to reach up, we do need to be able to have that freedom and also load because that overhead luggage could be heavy. Now we spend most of the time doing this, um, I do. So the ribcage start collapsing in, which is gonna close up the front of the shoulder. How can we open that up and have a healthy shoulder, shoulder girdle? First of all, I would check out the video from last week about how to move the thoracic spine because when we have more movement in the rib cage, the shoulder will free up already. If that didn't do the trick or you would like to go a little further, you might need a broomstick, a rod, a down, whatever you can grab. And let's see, let's just see what we have. Can we bring this over the head? Is that feeling okay with the shoulder blades and in the arms and um, the shoulder joint itself? If that feels okay, can you keep the elbow straight and bring it back and behind you? Please do not pop the shoulders out. This might be your first time, so this might not come all the way down, but this would be a full range of motion. So when you do that, you could actually feel that the shoulders have to go and squeeze the shoulder blades, all right? Now you probably can see this movement, not just from me, but also from the mirror in here. That is the movement. If we limit it a little bit, I'm gonna show you a little trick how to get there. It's gonna be a movement that allows for some elbow bend. So let's hang on to the left side. The right elbow is going to bend and is coming across over the head, if you frame your, uh, your head. And then the elbow is still bent, it's coming down. So now you have the dowel behind you with both elbows bent. That's a little bit of a cheat, a little bit of accommodation. And then you bring the other arm up and bring it around. And you could make this one smooth circular movement. Let's do that again. Elbows are bent. It's a little less stress. And then go towards the other way. So the right arm would stay down, the left arm comes around and frames the head going all the way around. Now, try to think that you also move in your shoulder blades, not just the shoulder, the upper arm bone itself. Let's look at that from the back for a moment. So let's just do one on each side. You could feel that the right shoulder blade has to move and accommodate all that movement. And this time the left shoulder blades rising up, going down, going out to the side, why the other arm is coming around. And we're just gonna retest the full range of motion. How would that feel? It's more open. So you could do this, you could practice that daily, and you could also create a little bit of movement by turning the torso. So I would have a wider stance, turn the chest, and why don't try that mobility, the cheating one, what we tried first. Once you rotate the spine, the same movement requires different engagement from the shoulder joint. So you would feel this is a little more challenging on one side than the other, but it also opens up the fascia and the whole back chain a little differently. And once you check again, this feels there is no hard task anymore. So if you want to know more, just check out the YouTube channel, let me know, um, send me a question, find some stuff on Facebook and Instagram.